Hello and welcome to the first um, part of the underwater tutorial and what I'm going to do is a similar sort of scene to the trailer but I'm going to do it from the point of view of actually being inside a cave. Um, now obviously the caves there's an inside and an outside and you'll see some of the outside as well as the inside. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make basically a landscape using the landscape generator that will form the floor of the cave and also it'll give us some background on the uh, view out of the cave. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the square and the second thing I'm going to do is turn off turn on the landscape generator and this is how you do that you go to user preferences add-ons and then in the search box at the top left you just type in landscape and you get add mesh and landscape and you tick that box there and if you want to keep it turned on for everything you do you hit save user settings if not and I don't because I don't use it very often I'm just going to close it down right so you see that now under mesh you've got landscape which wasn't originally there so I'm going to hit that you can see it's made this little landscape that is too little at the moment um, now there's a load of settings down here and before you move it or scale it or do anything you want to change these settings to be whatever it is you want to be um, so my mesh size is going to be 5 for the moment, maybe a bit higher than that, maybe 10, that'll do. And there's different types of landscape you can have, and I want it smooth, but just to show you, if it's not smooth, that's what happens. And there's lots of different landscape types. There's what they call heteroterrain, and they're all slightly different. Multifractal is the standard one. Turbulence, which is very turbulent, as shattered, which is also quite turbulent. Strata, which does when you've got higher hills, gives you strata. And here we've got the height. If I increase the height, you can see it goes up. And you can have a plateau that can be set however high you like. So you see, you've got quite a lot of control over the landscape. And I actually don't want anything terrifically high, I don't want it any higher than maybe about that um, so I'm going to take the height down and you've got here a fall off there's type 1, there's type 2 and none and you're now coming to a, a, a reason why I don't much like the landscape generator because quite frequently you actually want to dip in the middle and that isn't so easy to do um, it might actually be easier if I drop the mesh size back down to one and the height down and then just simply scale the whole thing up it might actually be a lot easier to do it that way and here you've got a reasonably flat area that you could put a cave in I still don't like it uh, and this is the reason why I don't often use it 
it's quick for a beginner to use rather than using sculpt and all those things but I often find that I have to use sculpt Ooh, this looks like it's on the bottom really um, I find that I often have to use sculpt anyway in order to get a decent result and that looks like this is going to be the case with this um, let's change the random seed and we'll get different landscapes I'm basically looking for one with a with a hole in the middle of it it's one with a big mountain that's the closest I've seen so far to one with a hole in the middle I'm going to put fall off type none let's have another look and this would sort of do, looking from that direction I think that would probably do if we're looking from there, if our cave is here and I just want to do a little bit of sculpting to flatten that off in the middle and I think I'm going to leave it at that so those are the settings I've got, multi-fractal mesh size 1 random seed 1 noise size 1, depth 6, dimension 1, lacunarity 2, height 0.26, plateau 1.09 but we don't see it because there's no, as you can see you can, you can flatten off the top of the hills if you want to, let's uh, flatten off the tops of the hills a bit, hang on, you can see there it's starting to flatten the tops of the hills I think that's probably a better effect actually for what I've got in mind that's what we'll do okay so there we go that's it for our landscape and as soon as we start to scale it we hit S we can't change it anymore um, well we can and we are because we're going to change it Let's uh, scale it up to about the right sort of size that we want it. We're about there. And that will do. Alright, so I'm going to go into sculpt mode now. And in sculpt mode, there's lots of wonderful tools, and the one I'm going to use is flatten. and we want to flatten this area here which is where our cave is going to be is that flat enough? yeah I think that's flat enough and I'm going to kind of put our cave here looking out in that direction and I want to bulge this this hill up a bit more here in actual fact so let's go to inflate what I want to do is I want to make it look from this sort of an angle as though that hill is actually just a hill and there's no edges um, and that's kind of working so this is going to be our, our sandy bottom so to speak and um, that will do fine and what we want to do now is we'll give it a bit of a material so we'll come out of sculpt mode into object mode and I'm going to set up as well I'm going to set up the lighting actually beforehand because I'm going to want to do a trial render in a minute and the lighting is going to be a spotlight 
so I'll change the type of lamp to a spotlight and I'm actually probably going to need two spotlights I'm going to need an overhead one which is going to be quite bright and a less bright one but the less bright one I'm going to hide somewhere because that's really just to illuminate the cave so that sort of a, that sort of an angle because although it's a cave you're going to want some illumination in it let's turn on the cone so we can see what it's doing you can see that's not quite right and we want to increase the size of the cone a bit like so the shadow because it's an underwater scene I want it to be a greenish shadow and the way we do that we'll temporarily turn that up I'm going to stick this in the sort of greeny blue area and I'm going to darken it right down it's not quite black but it's pretty dark it's a very dark green okay so we'll reselect our landscape area and we'll add in a new material I'm going to call it sandy and new texture now I've actually got a texture that I use for this quite a lot um, and it's like sand dunes so we want image texture and we're going to open 3D as I remember it's just called sand there it is you can see what it's like now this has, is actually a reasonably tileable texture so I'm going to turn it up so there's about maybe seven or eight in each direction we'll see uh, start off with seven oops seven that's better and I'm not going to have it affect the colour I'm going to have it affect the normal only and by a reasonable amount now in this you can see it's a bit like that we don't want any specular intensity really we'll have a little tiny bit we're going to make that slightly yellow going to make the sand a bit of a sandy colour towards the orange there like so actually I'm going to make that specularity a colour a bit whiter there we go so we want to view from the front so I'm going to view front and this is something I like doing, I like having my view set to the front quite a bit because then you know where you are in the scene rather than just adding objects everywhere and then not knowing where anything is so what we want to do now is align the view align the active camera to the view you see there we've got a view of our front now we're not actually quite in the right place with our landscape obviously our landscape wants to come down and it wants to rotate we want to be something like that let's have a look through the camera and you can see what that's like so we can't actually see the edges of the landscape the landscape wants to be reasonably high because it's going to be the floor of our cave so um, that's something like that perhaps well that looks good that's quite a good sort of background image isn't it so we'll render that and see what that looks like and you can see 
to turn this up. Ah, oh, what I haven't done, of course, is turn the lamp up to anything decent. Now the lamp eventually is going to be really um, bright. It's going to need to be something like 30 or even 40 because of the water. But just for the moment, I'm going to set it as 12. Re-render that. And that's a bit better. It's too jagged, so at the moment I've got my Oops. At the moment I've got my texture value down here too high at 0 0.6. 0 0.278 might be better. Re-render that. That's a bit better. We're still a bit. It's still a bit lumpy. 0.12. Try that. And they're starting to look, it's more like sand now. That looks quite good. By the time you've got a bit of blur in there from the water, that will look absolutely fine. And I think I'm going to leave that at that. Except we need to add in another texture and we need to put some colour variation in. Because at the end of the day... things are not all the same colour and I'm going to add in a sort of a greeny colour like that and let's have a quick look see what that looks like it's a bit Wants to be a lot darker green actually, I think it needs to be more green, less yellow. Wants to be quite dark. Something like that. And it just simulates a bit of algae growing on the bottom of the on the bottom of the ocean bed. And you can change the colour value there as to how much you want it to mix. And if I re-render it. You can see you've got areas now which are looking greener, but they're quite big. So maybe we need to reduce the size of our texture. Maybe we need to make it affect the colour a bit more and make this perhaps a bit of a darker green. down a bit further on the texture size. You can see now you've got areas of quite dark green and that's starting to look quite convincing. And that's absolutely fine and I think that is where I'm going to leave it for our sand. And we're going to scatter some rocks across here eventually but not yet. So, the next thing to do is to make a cave. And uh, so if I hide the render, we're going to add in, surprise, surprise, a cylinder. Uh, scale it up a bit so we can see it. Dun, dun, dun. Cylinder comes looming over the horizon at us. And it's going to be obviously over here, and we're going to want to rotate it like so. And it's it's this reason that I put the camera where it is, so I know everything it is. I know if I rotate it x ninety, it will literally go to ninety degrees to the camera, like so. And We've got two options. We can either make the cylinder itself quite a lot bigger, 
which would work. We can bring the cylinder closer to the camera, which also works. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it actually shorter because we don't want a huge number of vertices that we can't actually see and bring it next to the camera. So this will eventually be the mouth of the cave. Now obviously we don't need the ends and we don't need some of the bottom. So let's go into edit mode here. We'll go into face select by clicking down here and hit the A key. I'll just turn on our friend down here, screencast keys. So we can hit, see what happens. You hit the A key, right click on the end cap, X to get rid of it, delete faces. Same with the other end cap, X to get rid of it, delete faces. And now I want to delete some of the bottom of here, not all of it, but some of it. So C for circle select, and we'll take about that much. So that's X and faces, and that's going to be like our cave mouth. Now, if I view, you can see it's not very convincing at the moment. I view from the camera, you can see. Yeah, in actual fact it could do with going a bit further forward than that. Go back to object mode and move it. View camera. I just want to make sure that I can't see these, these edges, that's all. They want to be just out of shot. But you want to be able to see the edges of the cave here. And eventually you'll see the top here, but not yet, because I haven't finished playing with it. Now at the moment we can see a bit too much of the floor. So there's two ways of doing this. I can either move the camera up Oh, sorry, controls in. Move the camera up, not the cylinder. Like so where I can alter the actual angle of the camera like so and I'm going to do a little bit of both now I'm not worried about not seeing that because of what I'm going to do in a minute what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to scale it and then change the shape of everything so hold on to your hats so we're going to select our cave and I'm going to scale it just in that direction only and now we need to make this look like a cave, we need to make it look like some rocks. And I want in this cave, I'm going to put like a pillar in, so it's not, so it's a regular. So to start with, I need to subdivide it. So I'm going to go into edit mode here. And I'm going to subdivide it until I've almost got square faces. So just hit the subdivide button, whoops, I need to select it first, A for all, subdivide, 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 and how square is that, whoops, to go another one. No, it's not going to work, is it? I'm going to have to do a different way because it wasn't that right sort of square to start with. So, Control Z, 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 and I'm going to actually loop cut instead. What am I doing? Loop cut and slide, and hit the mouse wheel until you've got square or nearly square faces and that's good enough so I'm going to click that and I'm going to hit escape and there we go I'm going to hit A again twice to select everything and now I can subdivide and it will give me squares 
and that is good enough for the moment okay because I'm going to do some rough shaping now and I'm going to turn on proportional editing and I'm going to make sure that the fall off is spherical and I to deselect everything the first thing I'm going to put in is a bulge for this um, pillar that I'm going to have that will split off some of the cave and I've got to decide where it's going to be and I think it's going to be about here okay now if I grab hold of that you'll see the circle there is far too big so by rotating my mouse wheel I can make that circle smaller and smaller and that's good enough and I'm now going to make this bulge down that's not quite enough of a bulge go a bit further like so and now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and I'm going to put similar bulges in and out um, to make the to make the um, cave irregular just make it an irregular shape and you can actually do this from the inside from the camera view like that so you can actually see what the cave looks like from the inside and that's quite a good way of doing it um, because you want this thing to look natural and in a minute we're going to change the whole resolution of this cave and we're going to put some texture on it um, via the dis via the deform modifier and that's going to change it all and make it look a lot better than it actually is at the moment you see this is where my this is where my pillar is going to be in actual fact I might as well take that down I want to I want to reduce the size of that even further so I'm affecting less vertices that roof is not quite irregular enough and not to worry about things looking like little pyramids because that's all going to get sorted out in a minute we'll go back to the camera view and there we go that will do for the moment so now what we want to do is hit the A key again couple of times and we're going to subdivide it again and this is to give us enough vertices that we can put some sort of a modifier on but before I do that I'm going to go right down inside here and hit A to deselect I'm going to select those sort of chisel shaped vertices there I'm going to move that up so that we've got a flattish bottom to our pillar and I know from experience doing this sort of thing before that I have to get this pillar right now because if I if I don't 
Uh, what I want to do is turn proportional editing off, of course. Because if I don't get this pillar right, then I won't be able to texture it properly like the rest of the cave, and it's just going to look like rubbish. So, let's have a look at the, from the bottom. I'm going to take the landscape. Make sure I can just turn it off up there. I'm going to turn the landscape off in the view. So that means I can't select anything on it either. And circle select. And I'm going to circle select everything that's at the bottom of this pillar. So I've got kind of a, a squarish pillar like that actually. Escape from there. And I'm going to drag that down, 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 like so. And that should do. And we need to introduce some more geometry here. So, let's try something. I'm not sure if it'll work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So I've selected more. Subdivide a couple of times, and that's added some more geometry in, which will be good enough for our purposes. So we'll go back to view camera, and now what we're going to do, we'll go into object mode, we're going to add a modifier. The modifier we're going to add is the displace modifier, and the texture I'm going to use. Might as well be our cloud texture. That's just going to move things all over the place. At the moment, it's far too strong, so we need to move back. It's also too small a texture, so we can't use our cloud modifier. So I'm going to have to add a new texture. So plus to add a new texture. And if we go up to the actual texture thing after we've been in the modifier. It knows that what we want is that particular texture. And it's copied it from before, so we can raise the size of it. And get what effect we want. Now different textures give you different effects. This is clouds. Um, Voronoi sometimes is, is quite good for rocks. And we change the size a bit so up, down sideways you can see what you've got and I think that actually we will use for annoy um, just dial the strength of it back a bit and you see what this has done is it's put some quite large Some quite large bulges in and I think they're too large um, so I'm going to go back to the texture drop the size of it mm, maybe increase the size of it actually that's better so that's that and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply that and then after I've applied that I'm going to add in a subsurface modifier subdivision surface now I only want one and I'm going to apply it so I'm making it real and now again I'm going to add a second displace modifier this time it's not going to be a Voronoi, it's going to be clouds. And as you can see, I want to reduce the size even further, not quite that small. Maybe 0.15 or something. And go back to the displace modifier and turn it down so you can see that's with nothing that's just a subsurface modifier bang suddenly 
you've got I mean, depends what sort of rock you want. I mean, that could be overkill. That might be about right. I'm going to be adventurous. I'm going to leave that on. No, maybe I'll go in between. 0.15. There we go. I'm going to apply that as well. I'm going to set it to smooth shading. Now we want a material for it. I've actually got a tileable rock texture. So I'm going to go into materials, new. Well, I'm not going to call it rock, I'm going to call it cave. It wants to be quite a dark brown. Something like that. Specular wants to be a lighter brown but still definitely a brown specular intensity wants to go down and the hardness wants to go down so that it kind of gleams crystals and rock sort of do that that might be a bit much something like that and I'm going to add in my rock texture on top of that. It's new. Image. Open. And where are we are for rock? And when you save textures in a single directory like this, it's a good idea to actually save them alphabetically by subject. So it's rock, cliff, rock texture of rock tileable and that's the one I'm going to use you can see what it's like and I'm gonna make it repeat four or five times we'll try four and see what it's like color I'm gonna make it vary the color a little bit not a huge amount so I want to make sure everything's quite dark because it really wants to make a silhouette of the entrance and I'm going to make it warp the I'm going to make it uh, change the normal a little bit and we'll have a look and see what that's like now you can see what we've got and what we've got is a pillar that doesn't quite come down far enough, but that never mind, we can change that. I'm going to change that using scale in a minute. I'd better turn the landscape back on in the in our editing window. Let's hide the render view. View camera. You can see there what the problem is. So actually that is that is okay what I want to do is change that down like that and then maybe it's uh, I think what we've got is we've got this rock pillar looks a bit too smooth although it would be smooth because let's face it it's been hit by the the sea all the time it's going to get worn down isn't it so that's going to be my excuse and it gives me something to stick some weeds on and the weeds will make it look less smooth so maybe that's okay something like that and at the moment as you can see there's no real light inside the cave um, I want a bit of light in there but not too much and uh, normally what you'd use for that is well we'll try it I'm going to add in a lamp and it's going to be a hemi let's view from the top I'll drag it all the way back out here It's going to be coming from our camera near enough. I 
think that will be okay because it's not going to be the main light. Um, I think that will be okay. So let's rotate it so it points into the cave. Kind of like that. And we're going to have to fiddle around with the light level later because, as I said, with the. I'm going to make it slightly green. With the um, water, when we put the water on, which will be some of the next part of the tutorial, um, you'll find you need to adjust all the lighting up because, of course, the light gets absorbed by the water. So let's see what that looks like. You're like, oh, <laughs> it's way too much. So, point one. Because you want the strong light to be outside, but you want enough light inside you can see what you're doing. You're just starting to get that. Maybe point two five. I don't want to spend too much time messing around with this. I just want to check that the lighting actually works because a lot of things are going to be based on it and 0.25 is a bit much 0.18 maybe and there we go that will, that will do you can still see some of the walls of the cave um, now what I want to do is I want to get the actual light coming in through the cave and to do that I'm going to have to change weather main light is oops so I'm going to go back to our main light our main spotlight here and it's going to have to come at an angle which means it's going to have to be lower like so and I want it at quite an angle so it shines light inside the cave it needs to be almost like that what does that look like you can see there it is shining light inside the cave and you've got a shadow there but that's a bit too much I think so let's take that angle back let's move it across a bit to make the shadows a bit more interesting and rotate it and we'll see what that's like and that's a bit better so now we've got light coming in from the cave we've got a bit of a glow up here um, what does that look like when we take the intensity up to say maybe 20 and yeah you can see it's starting to bounce around so that's okay that's a good basis to start from and that is a good place to leave this particular tutorial and um, the next time we're going to be adding some rocks um, using a particle system we're also going to be adding um, some weed and we're going to be adding the water and then we'll basically get everything ready for our fish just like an aquarium well thanks very much if you like this tutorial please subscribe and please share it thank you